So how about that eclipse? This is pretty much what it looked like here in Houston. You literally couldn't see anything. This was as close to an eclipse as I got. And I'm hungry now. I am kind of kicking myself a little bit because we did have a camping trip planned that was on the lake in Livingston. And that's about an hour from our house. I don't know if that was any closer to the path of totality, but went ahead and canceled that camping trip because I kind of fell for all the propaganda that I'm trying to tell others not to fall for, mainly because people were saying how crowded the roads were going to be. It was just going to be crazy and mass pandemonium, and I was just like, I don't want to be out in that. Another reason we canceled our camping trip was because we paid too much attention to the meteorologist, which I think I missed my calling as a meteorologist because I don't know about where you live, but they are always wrong here. I want to get paid to be wrong all the time, too, instead of just doing it for free. They called for so much rain, damaging winds and hail, nothing happened. Going forward, we're going to just live our life, not pay too much attention to what the weather is supposed to be. Something I did think was cool, though, Facebook pops up with your memories of what happened on that date one year ago, two years ago, whatever, however long you've been on Facebook. And I got a memory that popped up from a year ago where the moon was lit up like the sun. It was so bizarre. We just happened to be camping. We were on the beach and we came out to look at the moon and it was literally a glowing orange. I'm going to insert some pictures right here. So even though we could not see the eclipse this year, it was cool to get this memory that popped up. I kid you not, the moon looked just like the sun. It was nighttime, but it was bright as daytime. It was also the day before Easter, which just made it that much more of a spiritual, beautiful picture. I am here just collecting my free Chick-fil-A biscuit. I said in a previous video, I have the app on my phone because my daughter gets Chick-fil-A a few times a week. She buys it for herself, but she didn't want to mess with putting the app on her phone. So I asked if I could, so I could collect the freebies because she doesn't care about them. And she said yes. She pays for, for the Chick-fil-A. I get to reap the benefits. I'm here with that. And then I did get myself another new cherry berry teas. They have this new cherry berry seasonal blend that they put in their frosted lemonade, their regular lemonade, and their tea. So I'm about to try that because when I get something for free, I like to go ahead and buy a little something something if I can. Speaking of free or almost free, my daughter got a job. I think I said that in my previous video or one of them uh, at a new restaurant and they had their grand opening and instead of it just being for one day, it lasted all week. So they ran specials all week. And it's a brunch place. It's a sit down. And, you know, I would compare it to like an upscale uh, Denny's or uh, if you have a toasted yolk in your area. It's just kind of a brunch place. They were running specials all week on menu items that are normally $15 where they were charging a dollar for them. The owners made the mistake of not putting a limit on it, but at the same time, do we really live in a society where you have to put a limit on something before somebody takes advantage of it? So you can probably see where I'm going with this. No limit, and it applied to not only dining in, but it's a smaller restaurant, so they applied it to the to-go orders as well. So there were people that were calling in, placing orders for dozens and dozens of these meals for a dollar. And it was putting a big strain on the kitchen. They were getting behind. People that were coming to dine in were getting a little agitated. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great people in this world. Patient people who understood new restaurant, new employees, trying to learn the ropes. It was overwhelming to say the least. Olivia did a great job. In fact, she's had some positive reviews written about her on Yelp or Yahoo. I can't remember. Where I was going with this is talking about patience and talking about taking advantage of things in our society. Olivia told me how somebody wrote a nasty review 
about some people in the restaurant and called the restaurant trashy, which it's far from trashy. It's a very nice, cute, quaint little mom and pop restaurant. They wrote that the place was trashy and someone saw the review and said, I know exactly who wrote that. And when they called the place trashy, they were coming out with bags and bags of their dollar special food but because they had to wait a little bit and they just did that so they, they took for granted a situation if I was an owner of a restaurant yes I would probably put a limit on it but then you will have issues there as well there will be people going well there's six people in my family and if you're only putting a limit of two then that's not fair it's free is what it is you go to places and they're like kids eat free am i gonna go in and go identify as a kid i want to eat free too no you you take what you're offered and just be gracious about it it was the owners who decided to not put a cap on how many meals they were giving away and if it was for dine-in or to go didn't matter so and they ran the specials all day, Monday through Friday. Heart, sorry, someone's coming to their car next to me, so it looks weird that I'm sitting here talking to myself. But for all they know, I'm on my Bluetooth. They ran the specials all week, not just on opening day. After day one, if I was an owner, I probably would have changed it and said, okay, we need to put a cap on this, maybe one dollar entree per order that's to go, or maybe I would make it dine-in only where I have to see everybody present in the family and then give them the free meal. But then that would have caused chaos because then there would have been people on Tuesday going, well, I talked to somebody on Monday and they were able to order 10 of each item. It just would have been a whole thing, you know, because people really take advantage of people's kindness and it's really sad it's what if a single mom tried to go into this restaurant that my daughter works at because they she can't afford to take them out but she gets told well there's a two-hour wait because the kitchen's behind because all these people are placing to go orders so she has to walk away because she has to get to work i wish you didn't have to put certain micro managing things in place like okay, this is for dine-in only, or if you're ordering to go, you can only take one of the special. I just wish people would use common sense and think about others. I went on a page in my community. It's a page that was started after Hurricane Harvey pretty much wiped out half our town. We lost businesses, grocery stores, schools, a bunch of people's homes. They lost everything. So we started this page on Facebook and a neighbor that was in need lost everything. Hey, we need some tools. Does anybody have anything we could borrow? And people would get on there and loan things to each other or give things away that they didn't need. That was the purpose of this page. So people could reach out. You have a need, you have a want, you get on, you kind of trade. It didn't take long before people started taking advantage of that too. And to this day, I'm surprised the page is still up, but it is. And I've given things away because Hurricane Harvey was in August. By December, you know, a lot of people still haven't rebuilt or they lost everything. So Christmas is rolling around and families with young children or teenagers lost everything. And, you know, we would do exchanges for gifts or we would collect money, you know, on this website. And so people could give their children some Christmas gifts and we gave away some iPads, some things, some tablets, things we weren't using anymore for some teenagers to be, get Christmas presents and, and things like that. But you can just, over time, okay, years have gone by, there are still people and there's good people, there's people who just, you know, maybe you're living from paycheck to paycheck, but you can tell the ones that get on and they're just looking for something for free hey i need a bedroom set does anybody have one and there's people that'll step up and say well i've got the frame and i've got the dresser and i've got a mattress that we've only had a year and people take advantage of situations and it's really really sad it's kind of getting to where as a society we're blaming others for our own rudeness well, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say that. I went and did a post on this page reminding everybody, let's show grace to this new restaurant that's opened. 
These people are nice. They're trying to do the, be the best they can. They're new. They're going to get the hang of it. Let the grand opening week die down. Some people were being so awful that people were quitting their jobs mid-shift. And whenever you're doing something so mean or cruel that you're causing people to walk out on their job, their livelihood, that's a problem. So I just went on this page that reaches a lot of people in my community, just reminding them to show grace, be kind, um, be patient, understand this is opening week. If you don't have a lot of time to spare to go wait or, you know, please don't take advantage of the freebies. And people would write back, well, maybe they should put a limit on it. Okay, true, but that's the owners of the company that made that decision. Not the managers, not any of the staff, the kitchen. They're just there doing their job. So to get mad at them and think that they got what they deserve because there was no limit on these dollar meals is just kind of ridiculous. It's like blaming the victim, victim shaming. Or, well, they're the one that chose to work there. Well, they're the ones that chose to not put a limit on it. This is totally a different scenario, but it kind of reminds me of when you're trying to buy concert tickets. You get on right when they go on sale, and then boom, they're all sold out because all the scalpers took them. It's just ridiculous, the society that we live in where we don't just take what we need like with toilet paper and leave something for somebody else it's just a me 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 hearts grown cold i was getting a lot of positive feedback when i wrote that post but there were a couple of the negative nellies on there and they may be the ones i was talking about all i was doing was saying before you go write a nasty review when people are trying their hardest doing the best they can and then when people quit that puts all the pressure on the people that are still there. You know, try to show some grace, be patient. I had somebody call me all high and mighty and don't act like you never wrote a negative review. It's like, phew, it, people are just missing the point of what I'm saying. Yeah, I've written negative reviews too. It takes a lot to get me to do that. I think the last negative review I wrote was about La Madeline. I went in with my girls. The restaurant was completely dead. We walked up to the gal at the counter and she just stared at us like this, just staring at us. No, hello, how are you? Can I take your order? Do you want to ask what our specials are? Do you have any questions? Do you need a menu? It was just... So, I don't know. I guess I was feeling kind of feisty too, so I did the same thing. I just stared back at her. Didn't make me a better person, and <laughs> but I was just like, is this for real? I did write a review because the restaurant was totally dead. They were not busy. They weren't slammed. They weren't running around spreading their self thin. It was just some girl that just didn't feel like talking to us. So, yes, I wrote a review that was negative. And I was just saying, hey, this was my experience. La Madeline, if you see this, you might want to do a little bit of retraining for some of your staff. Our town never even rebuilt all the way after the hurricane it wiped out half our town a lot of those businesses grocery stores never came back so we should be delighted if a mom and pop place is trying to come we should welcome them and do everything we can to see to it that they stay in business there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to gripe but the bible says hearts will grow cold the love of many will fade it just seems to be what's happening it definitely is a sign of the times if you read your Bible, none of this should take us by surprise. We're not supposed to be of the world, but in the world. There are a lot of great people, but there are a lot of horrible people too. Sometimes the horrible ones are the ones that have the most profound impact on us that we remember. And we need to try to reverse that and try to let go of the petty people and focus on the ones who are kind. As a society, I'm just saying, please be patient. Please don't disparage somebody and call them trash. It's so easy to be a keyboard warrior and hide behind your screen and say nasty stuff and call people trash or call a business trash. And it's just really sad and discouraging. And anybody who has a job, if you have a job and you're trying, that's so much better than the people that take advantage, again, taking advantage of a system or the government just collecting their 
money so they can go get their nails done and carry their iPhones and go use their food stamp card so they can buy Funyuns, Cheetos, Coke, whatever. Okay, I'm going down a path I don't, I don't mean to go down. I'm not trying to judge anybody that does get free money from the government. Uh, I was a single mom for a while with a special needs child. I depended on a food stamp card for a while, but there are people particularly here in Texas, but I'm sure everywhere, who are just waltzing right in, cutting the line, not going through the right channels, and they're benefiting. And we've got people who are homeless living on the street, and it's just, it's just sad. That also reminds me of why I've kind of stepped back from being on nextdoor.com. I really loved that site. It was a great way to meet neighbors in my community. It's a great outreach for safety. If somebody's car got broken into, they can get on and say something about it. Hey, heads up, there's somebody breaking into cars in our neighborhood, or if a pet goes missing, oh, you can put out a warning or hey, be on the lookout for my pet, and it's just a great tool. But now even next door has been infiltrated by just awful human beings and I know the Bible says in the last days hearts will grow cold and that's definitely what's happening because there's again a lot of victim shaming. Well, I'll give you an example. People who get on and say somebody ran over my dog and just kept going and then people will be like well you, was your, you didn't have your dog on a leash? That's your fault your dog got ran over. Well you don't know everybody's circumstances. There's been people who were at work, maybe had their dog in their backyard, and the lawn guy came over and mowed and didn't shut the gate all the way. And so, yeah, their dog got out and got ran over. And so, instead of adding insult to injury, somebody's dog died. Somebody hit their dog and kept going. And when I say it's your fault, just blows my mind. I just can't wrap my mind around it and it actually hits very close to home because the same thing happened to us a few years ago. Our dog Snugs or Snugglekins and we were coming back from somewhere. I had the girls with me. They were much younger. They were in elementary school. We got out of the car and I did not have the dog on the leash because she just rode with me somewhere and we came back and we always get out of the car and all we do is walk straight to the back door from our driveway. No big deal. Well she saw a squirrel and just took off. So yeah, was that my fault that I didn't have her on a leash getting out of our car and into our home? Yes. She ran out into the street. Somebody came, hit her, and just kept going like they hit a rock or hit a piece of trash or something. Just no stopping, nothing. And my girls were traumatized. I was traumatized. I actually went into shock. My neighbor came out and was trying to get me to help move the dog. And I was just standing there like I, I just couldn't believe it happened. That person just kept going and went on about their day. You know, no, no inconveniences there. So my girls were sad that we lost our dog. But the worst part, Chloe actually had to go into counseling at her school, grief counseling. She couldn't get over the fact that she's going, it's, I'm sad that we lost Snugs, but my mind is just blown that somebody hit her and kept going. And that's the part that she was troubled by, that somebody hit, hit our dog and kept going. Victim shaming is at an all-time high, it seems, as hearts are growing cold. You can definitely see a division in society and in our culture between those who have class, who have compassion, who show grace to others, and then those that are just awful. And you can see a big reflection of that in the way people drive. People are taking out their rage on the roads. If it's not in restaurants, it's or on next door or on social media, it's in the way they drive. You're trying to switch lanes and get over. Somebody speeds up because they don't want to let you over. When we take our camper out, we have to drive a certain speed limit. We can't suddenly step on our brakes. So we got people that come on the highway and we can't slow down because if we do, we could jackknife. We've had people where we weren't able to slow down and it pisses them off because they're getting on the highway. So they go around us, get in front of us and start braking. And then we've actually had somebody follow us to our next exit. And 
pull over into a parking lot so they could drive by and flip us the bird because we didn't let them over but we couldn't we literally could not and so like I said they got in front of us and were breaking and doing all these things I can't tell you how many exits we've missed because people would not let us over or you know people have just turned driving into a competitive sport and it, it's just we were warned about this in the Bible I don't know why I'm acting surprised but I guess I just wanted to get on here and not necessarily rant but kind of vent vent and rant maybe those are the same things but just talk to y'all maybe get your feedback are you experiencing people with short tempers are you experiencing people who take advantage of situations free things good deals whatever the case may be i appreciate y'all listening to me i'm gonna go eat my free chick-fil-a sandwich and uh I will be in touch with y'all later. I hope y'all have a blessed day. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.